Hello, I'm Dr. Chris Burke at the School of Computing at the University of Nebraska-Lincoln. And this is an introduction to get you started in Computer Science 1. Uh, we're going to be basically running through your first lab, which gets you set up with all the accounts and all the resources that you're going to be using throughout the semester. Before we begin, you're going to have to set up some accounts. Uh, the first one that you're going to want to do is GitHub. So you're going to want to go to github.com, unless you already have a GitHub account. And it's going to look something like this. Just go ahead and sign up. I suggest that you use your school email to do so because you might be entitled to some freebies with a, any email that ends with a .edu as a student. The second account that you're going to want to claim is your CSE account. Uh, if you go to cse.unl.edu slash claim, it's going to look something like this. Now, for the vast majority of you, you're going to claim your account using your Huskers email. Some of you may not be in the College of Engineering, in which case you may not have a Huskers email, in which case you'll have to use an alternate email as indicated by your instructor. You can also come back to this website to reset your password if you need to. The next thing you're going to want to do before starting this lab is to familiarize yourself with the course, uh, its resources, policies, and other items. Some of those are enumerated in the lab handout itself. For example, the main School of Computing website, uh, the UNL Institutional Computing Policy, uh, the Academic Integrity page, and a couple more resources there. Finally, you're going to want to accept the invite that your instructor might have sent you through CodePost, codepost.io. This is a website in which we'll provide greater feedback on all of your assignments. So now let's go ahead and walk through Lab 1 and get you started. Broadly speaking, we're going to show you how to use an online IDE, an integrated development environment. We're going to show you how to create and edit files. Uh, we're going to show you some basic Unix commands. Then we're going to show you how to clone a lab from GitHub, which you'll be doing throughout the semester. Compile and run a program. And then finally submit and grade your program. And then we'll briefly show you what code post looks like uh, when you actually get something graded. The IDE that we'll be using is Visual Studio Code, which has been set up for us and is free, courtesy of the CS50 project. This is why you'll need a GitHub account. Go to the URL provided and simply log in via GitHub. When prompted, you'll have to log in using your GitHub credentials. Once you do so, the IDE should look something like this. So first of all, observe the layout. We have a file explorer over here on the left. We have a terminal down below. And then we have our text editor area. Now before we start, we're going to have to set some things up specifically for this course. So I've already provided some of the commands to set things up properly for you in the handout. Uh, but just to run through those really quick. First of all, we're going to make a directory. Now you can make directories by right clicking over here on, in the File Explorer and going New Folder, or New File if you want to. Or you can do that down here at the terminal using Unix commands. MKDIR is short for Make Directory. Then you give it a, the directory a name. We're going to make a couple of directories under the Workspaces directory that we're in. So if you type MKDIR under the Workspaces directory, we're going to make a directory called CS1. Now, as you can see, I've already done that up here. That's why I've got the CS1 directory already existing. But once you hit enter, it'll make the directory for you. We're going to make several other directories to hold our labs, our hacks, and a miscellaneous directory so that we can play around with it. So, mkdir slash workspaces slash CS1 slash labs. That'll create a lab directory under that CS1 directory that we created. We'll also mkdir workspaces cs1 slash hacks and miscellaneous. Now you'll note here you're not getting any feedback because that's the way that Unix works. Uh, no news is good news. If there were an error, it would actually tell us about it. 
But since there was no error, it simply just goes on to the command line and we can enter in another command. Next, we're going to set up what's called the symbolic link, typing ln hyphen s, ln space hyphen s, workspaces, CS1, CS1. Now I've already done this, which is why I've got the CS1 already up here, uh, but we're gonna have to do this for various reasons. If you're interested in them, read the handout. Now, if it was successful, you can expand that CS1 folder and see the fold, uh, subfolders that you just created, hacks, labs, and miscellaneous. I've got some other stuff in here from other projects that you may not necessarily have. Now, how do we get files into our IDE to start working with them? One way that we can do that is by right-clicking and creating a new file. I'm going to go ahead and create a file called info.md. This is a markdown file. MD stands for markdown. It's just a plain text file that you can start typing stuff into. You can get access to this file by double clicking on it and it'll open it up in your IDE and you can start typing. As you edit each file, it's generally automatically saved. You can delete files by simply right clicking and selecting delete. Let me go ahead and recreate that file so we actually have something to work with. Now, when you first come into the IDE, you're going to be in a directory that is not inside the directories that you created. So you're gonna to have to move into those directories. Each time you come in, that simply means that you're gonna to have to go CD CS1. Remember that all file names are case sensitive and you should avoid white space in your file names and directory names. CD is short for change directory. And so we're changing the current working directory into the CS1 directory. Now we can type LS, which is short for list. And you can see all of the files and directories that are under this directory. Let's go ahead and change directories into that miscellaneous directory that we just created this info file. CD MISC. If you type ls again, you can see that the file info.md is being listed. That's the only one in this directory. Now you can go back up one level by going cd space cd space period period. And we're back at the CS1 directory. This is a hierarchical file system. So you have a root and then you can go down into subdirectories. Let's go back into the miscellaneous directory. Now, sometimes you might get lost, in which case you can find out where am I, what, what is my current directory by typing PWD. And there's the full directory that you're in. You're actually in workspaces and then you're, uh, and then you're inside a folder that corresponds to your GitHub ID. And then we're in a subfolder called CS1 and then a subfolder called miscellaneous. Folders and directories, those terms can be used interchangeably. Now you can remove a file by simply right-clicking and deleting it, or you can do it from the command line by saying rm, whatever file name that you want, info.md in this case. rm is short for remove. Be careful, once you've removed a file, that's it. There's no undelete. It'll even ask you, do you actually want to remove this? Hit yes, and now that file is gone. It's still being displayed up here. That's just because we haven't refreshed our file explorer. Anytime that you need to, you can go ahead and refresh it by clicking this little icon here. And you'll see that there's no longer any file in the miscellaneous directory. It's still open over here in our text editor, but we can go ahead and close that. Be careful with deleting files. Again, there is no undelete. Now let's go ahead and actually get started coding. First of all, I'm going to create a source file called hello.c. Remember, remember file names are case sensitive. So if you name your file something else, which is perfectly fine, you will have to, you will have to be mindful of the commands that you run. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut and paste some code that we provided in the handout. This is a basic hello world program. I'm going to go ahead and put my name as the author though. 
I'll go ahead and leave the date, but you should update the date to the current date that you're working on. Now, don't worry about any of the code yet. We haven't really talked about any code, uh, but we are going to show you the process of editing this code, compiling this code, and then running this code. Be sure to save the file if it's not automatically saved. I am in the miscellaneous directory. If I type ls, I'll see this hello.c file. And now I need to compile it. The compiler that we'll be using throughout the semester is GCC. GCC, and then the, the file name that you want to compile, in this case, hello.c. And if there were no syntax errors in your program, again, it should not report any problems. If there were syntax errors, then it would report the errors or warnings. But no news in Unix is good news. Everything worked. In fact, if we go up here to our file explorer and refresh, we'll see this brand new file called a.out. That's our executable file that we can actually run now and see hello world being printed to the screen. To run it, go to the terminal and type dot slash a dot out and then followed by enter or return you can see here that it's going to print hello world that means that we successfully edited a program compiled it and ran it in our ide here next let's make a change instead of greeting the world i'll greet myself Hello, Chris. Now, if I just go down here and run it again, right, I really ha I didn't recompile, so I should not expect new results. Even though I changed the file and saved it, this file a.out was not changed. That's all right, we can go ahead and compile it again, gcc hello.c, and hit enter. And now, if I run it again, I'll see the different message. Here's a quick tip. You notice that I didn't retype any of that. I just hit up and I can scroll through all previous commands that I've run on this IDE before. You can also press down to scroll through the other way. You can also use command completion. So I didn't have to type out hello.c the entire thing. If I just go CC, GCC space and then a partial file name H and hit tab, it'll complete it for me. Okay, so that's some of the basics. Let's go ahead and actually start on this lab. I'm going to go ahead and go back one level directory up, and then I want to go down into the labs directory that I created previously. So I'll go CD space period period to go up one level. Remember that that takes me back to the CS1 directory that I created. And now let's go down into the labs folder, CD space labs. And you can see that I'm now in the labs folder. I can go ahead and collapse this miscellaneous, expand labs, and see that still there's nothing in there. Throughout the semester, you're going to be cloning some starter code from GitHub. If you type git clone and then the URL for lab one, you can either type it out or you can cut and paste it. And then hit enter. What that's going to do is it's going to go out to that repository, grab all the starter code that we've provided, and make a local copy. If you go up to the file explorer and hit refresh, you'll see that there's this brand new directory. If you go down to the terminal and type ls, you'll see that there's a new directory containing all the repo code that you just cloned. Let's go ahead and change directories into that new directory. Again, you can use tab to complete and not have to uh, type out the entire directory name. You can type ls and see that there are a bunch of files in here, including a hello.c file, a directory of images, and then the readme file that you should be following along with as this is the walkthrough for that. Let's go ahead and open up the hello.c file. It's going to be very similar to the hello world file that we just played around with. But you're going to want to change the author name, include your email, and today's date. A description of the program has already been provided for you. This entire thing is what's called a header. It's kind of like putting a header on your English essay uh, to indicate who wrote this. Now let's go down to the actual code. 
Instead of printing out hello world, let's change it so that we're printing out our name and major. That's the message that will now be displayed. Don't worry about the details of this code yet. Again, we're not there yet. If you want to print out another line, you can go ahead and copy and paste the printf statement and change it to your partner. and her major. Now since I'm already in that directory, I can go ahead and compile as before. GCC hello.c. I can run as before. If I refresh this, you'll see that an a.out file has been created. And I can see the message printed on two lines now. Now once you've gone through this process, you're going to have to hand this in. To hand it in, we use a system called CSE web hand in. If you go to computing, .unl.edu slash handin. You'll be prompted to log in with your CSE credentials. This is the account that you claimed before we got started. Once you're logged in, it should look something like this. If you're taking multiple computing courses, you'll have several choices to choose from. Depending on the section, it will look a bit different. Once you've clicked on your course, all the assignments will be listed. Find the one for lab one. Click on that, and you should be able to drag and drop a file or select it and upload it. But how do we get a file that's on the CS50 IDE over to this system? Well, first of all, we have to bring it down to our computer. Because this exists on GitHub servers or Microsoft servers or whatever it is, uh, we need to get it to a copy to our local computer here. To do that, you can go ahead and right click any file and select download. I now have a hello.c file here in my download directory. Again, you can go ahead and drag and drop, or you can click on the green button and manually select it. Sometimes it gets stuck and you may need to refresh. One thing that you probably never want to do is to delete something unless you absolutely want to delete it. If you make changes to a file and want to hand it in again, simply just drag and drop again and the old one will be overwritten. You don't need to delete it. Once we've handed it in, we want to make sure that it works and we can grade ourselves. Depending on the section that you're in, this URL will be different. But it should look something like this. Again, use the same login. If you logged into the hand in system, then you'll already be logged in here. You can choose an assignment. If they're grayed out, then you can't grade yourself on that assignment. But we do have an option for lab one. Go ahead and hit grade me. And you can see your program output over here on the right hand side. The expected output is often displayed on the left hand side. Because we can't predict what your names are, of course, we're just put in a placeholder here. In general, it doesn't have to match exactly as long as you're getting basically the same answers. And you're displaying at least as much information or more information. If it didn't work, you can go ahead and go back, fix it, download it, hand it in again, and then you can grade yourself as many times as you want and do that entire process as many times as you want up until the due date. Let's add one more print statement to show this. Make sure to save. Let me go ahead and not download it. If I attempt to upload this again, it won't work because it'll recognize that there were no changes to it. So let me go ahead and go back to my IDE, download it, and you'll note here that there are now two files, the original file and the hello with another one on it. Be careful. You can see the contents here. Here's the old file with just the two print statements. Here's the new file with, two print, uh, with three print statements. This is the file that we want to hand in. But if we attempt to do so, it will reject it because it doesn't match the file name. It doesn't match the expected file name of hello.c. 
In fact, if I hit refresh here, you'll see that it didn't even upload. So what we need to do is make sure that we rename the file to what it should be. Obviously, we can't have two of the same name, so we have to get rid of the original. And now we can upload it. Hit refresh. And you'll see that it was successful. It's a different size and we have a newer time date. Come over to the grader. You're still logged in. Just go ahead and hit grade me again. And it'll refresh the results to those three new print statements. Again, you can do this as many times as you want up until the due date. The last thing I wanna show you is code post. Now, generally labs will not be graded through code post. Uh, but greater feedback will look something like this. You'll have a grade up here, potentially who graded it over here, if it's revealed, and then greater comments line by line. For example, we forgot to change the author and the date. The greater instruction is write a proper header for every major file, include your name, date, and purpose of the program. And unfortunately, we lost one point on this. Instead of printing just bad, we were supposed to print our name and major here, so three points got taken off. There are some comments that do not have any points taken off and are meant as either instructional or good encouragement. Good white spacing, keep it up. That takes you through the first lab for this course and gets you set up on your IDE and prepares you for the rest of the semester. Good luck.